Hello and welcome to a new flow tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to talk about the send approval email action. So in a previous tutorial I talked about the start and approval action. Well these two are different so I prepare my Gmail uh, mailbox here, my SharePoint site with my SharePoint list and again just like in the other tutorial I'm going to add a new item here and that will trigger my flow. And you'll see that there are a few differences between the start an approval action and send approval email action. So I'm going to start with a new flow, create from blank. And I'm just going to search hundreds of connectors and triggers. item when an item is created in a SharePoint list I'm gonna use my site address here for my trigger and my list requests send approval email will be the name of my flow I cannot create a flow yet. Uh, if you're new to flow, you should know that you ha you need at least a trigger and an action to create a flow. So if I click on create flow, should at least contain contain one trigger and one action. I'm going to continue with my action, which is send approval email. Now, if you haven't seen my previous uh, tutorial. Um, let me show you the connector that I use there, approval. So if I search for approval, I used start an approval uh, action from the approvals connector. Well, for this tutorial, I'm going to use send approval email. This one is coming from the Outlook connector. So I'm going to configure this action here, and you should know that this action is using my credentials my outlook credentials so you see that it's using from my connection from my connections and if you haven't seen uh, my tutorial about connections go ahead and watch that tutorial as well so from my connections is using this connection here so I'm going to enter my uh, Gmail address remember that my start and approval uh, action from my previous tutorial didn't work with Gmail addresses. It only worked with um, organization email addresses. So I'm just going to enter my Gmail address. Gmail.com And the subject of uh, my email will be approval request. Uh, so by default, uh, you know, I, I get this uh, subject, which is fine. And you can see that the subject is not mandatory, uh, and also I have user options. Uh, I didn't have user options with the start and approval action from my previous tutorial. Now I have, so I can enter more than two options. So I'm, I'm going to enter a third option, more information required. Just because, let's say, a person is adding a new item in this list and the assignee of this approval process is requesting more information. Now with the start an approval action uh, you didn't have the third option. So you could either reject or approve, right? But if you need more information about a product that someone is requesting you can use this a action, right, and use the third option and really ask for more information instead of just rejecting and then provide an explanation. You'll, you'll see how that works in a minute. Okay, so if I click on Show Advanced Options here, I can see that I have the option to enter a body for my uh, send approval email. So I'm just going to write 
hello um, please approve the request for this product colon and then I'm going to enter my product name which is coming from the dynamic content um, which is the output of my SharePoint trigger so the product so this product here this dynamic content will be replaced with the actual product name I have on my list uh, import is normal okay create flow okay so now when a new item is created in my list I should get an email uh, in my Gmail right so let's see new uh, product sun sunglasses save so let's see what happens oh, my flow is running and the send an approval uh, email action is waiting for um, a response from Gmail okay so I got my email request for your input uh, hello please approve the request for this product sunglasses okay so as I said compared to the start and approval action now I have three options here instead of two and you'll see that if I click one of these uh, buttons here I won't get any uh, input box so remember that with the start and approval action uh, you get an input box where you can submit uh, a message but I don't get I don't get that here I click on more information required for instance and that will take me to a separate page thank you your response has been successfully registered so remember this is one of the differences you do not have the input box um, in your email like you had with the sudden approval action okay so this confirms that uh, my response was registered and I get a confirmation here that my flow ran successfully so I'm gonna click on done and I'm just gonna click on run history and if I click on my action here I can see that the output is the selected option more information required so just to recap um, the difference between send approval email and start an approval uh, is first of all you can send um, approvals uh, approval requests to email emails outside your organization um, you can add more than two options the options are not hard-coded so you can change this to yes no or whatever um, and um, you don't get as much output from this action from from the send approval email action as you get from the start and approval action so you don't have that much output you'll see that with this action you don't get the approver name for example or the approval email so if you send this to you know this email address uh, you don't get a reach output as you get with the starting approval action let me show you so let's say I want in my list here uh, to update my item with the status so in my status I want to put my approver email so the assignee email I want it here and then the status let's do that so new step add an action update update item 
update item. So after I get a response back from the assignee, I want to update the um, SharePoint item here in my list. Um, I want to update the status of my item, right? That is the logic. Okay, site address. I'm going to copy the site address again. Copy. Requests. Unique identifier of item to be updated. It's the ID that's created when an item is created uh, by the trigger. So this is the output from the trigger. Status will be what? I only have selected option. I don't have anything else. So can I cannot get the approver name or the approver email or the approver comments? I'm not getting any of that. So I don't have that output available. I only have selected option. That's it. So I'm pretty limited in what I what I can do here, uh, right? I don't I don't really know. You know, if let's say this flow is developed by someone uh, in my organization, and uh, the approver email, let's say the approver email address is uh, coming from a dynamic content, let's say. I cannot really use that, um, you know, I cannot use that uh, content, the output of my uh, action in my subsequent actions here. I don't, I don't have any way to access. Let's say you have, uh, you know, multiple rounds of approvals how do you tell who approved what? Uh, it's not possible. It's only possible with the start and approval action. It is not possible with send approval email action. So uh, be careful with that and uh, you know use the appropriate uh, action for your flow. So I'm going to update flow, do another test, new Uh, paper. Let's see. I'm asking for paper. Save. Inbox. Prove. Approve. Right. That's it. So these are the main differences between the start and approval action and send approval email action. Um, they behave differently and uh, each action has its own purpose. And you know when you, when you will start developing a flow um, that will need approval, you should be aware of uh, you know, disadvantages and advantages advantages of these uh, two actions. So I hope that this uh, tutorial is helpful for, for those that uh, want to understand the difference between these two actions. Thank you.